Laura Brand, thank you so much for joining me today at the Happy Place Virtual Festival. How exciting to be doing this. Thank you, Fern, for hosting and for having me here in the family retreat, which is brought to you by Brio. Um, today, we're going to be making Nature Ones. Nature Ones is an activity from my book, The Joy Journal for Magical Everyday Play. Um, my book, which is available, um, I believe, on the store, there's a link to the store somewhere on the website here at Happy Place. Um, it's 50 creative um, craft activities that are simple and really making the most of things we already have, as well as uh, encouraging a connection to nature as well. Um, nature Ones is one of my favourite activities um, from the book and I would say it's probably one of my um, daughter's favourite as well. It's um, simple, it's using things we can find, forage on our daily walks or in our gardens and it's mess free. So that's a double bonus for the parents who don't fancy um, any kind of mucky, messy crafts. Uh, what we're going to need is uh, a stick. I'm going to show you two nature ones today because um, I want you to really see it in action. And also we've got a variety of different things so we can have a play. But you're going to need one nature wand or a nature wand per child. Uh, we're going to need some twine and uh, ribbon. So I've, I think if, if we sort of keep to three pieces of twine, um, it's a good starting point. So uh, twine or string. I've chosen my colours already to save a little bit of time here, but of course, um, use whatever colours you want and make it joyful. The idea really is to make it joyful and fun and magical. Um, the uh, And two ribbons, so three pieces of twine and two ribbons. We've got our stick. And then what we're gonna use is various things we found on walk. So I've got some pine cones, a feather, I've got uh, a little bit of a branch from a willow tree, which I found, which is amazing. Obviously, if you're doing this in your garden completely and you're a child, then ask your parents, of course. But like uh, if this is on a walk, I would encourage you to use things you find already fallen on the floor. Uh, and then I've got a little bit of another. Um, it was another thing that was fallen in my garden, a bit of honeysuckle branch. Uh, and then to sort of scent the nature ones, I've also chosen a couple of sprigs of lavender and a couple of sprigs of rosemary. Then there's some wild flowers, some grasses and something I had in a, from a bunch of flowers that I had in the house already. Um, I'm going to make two ones, as I said, and we can have a play and um, I'm going to show you how to do it so that you can do this with your kids at home. I would encourage um, parents, have a go. Yourself. If you're making this at home, you could and you can and you can find some sturdy, I'd say sturdy sticks because I have previously used sticks that are not sturdy. And let me tell you, it um, certainly isn't ideal when they snap uh, upon first use of the nature wand. Um, this is just a play and a make-believe item, but it really is, um, it sort of does provide a sort of magical element to that sort of imaginative play. And I think it looks really pretty as well. So let's um, give these a go. What we'll start with is um, one of our sticks. I'm going to use this one first. This is a very, uh, my longer one. And I'd say we're going at like 30 centimetres is a good stick wand. Think sort of Harry Potter um, wizardry as well, of course, for some of those Harry Potter fans out there today. Um, and what we'll do is we'll use, we'll start with, uh, I'll start with this bit of willow. I like to hang it off the end so that it sort of is kind of whim whimsical. Um, of course, you're using whatever you have, so there's no right or wrong at all with this. Feel free to explore, um, and and just try a variety of things and I mean I've never used pine cones on a stick before but in a minute we're going to give uh, we're going to put those on as well because I felt like trying something new today um, and we're going to start with one of our pieces of string I have got a pair of scissors as well because after I've tied it I do tend to like to sort of snip the ends off um, we'll start with our willow uh, branch or whatever you have and you want to put it at the top of the uh, at the top of the stick. Then grab your piece of string and you can sort of have it hanging. So you've got about that much hanging off the end and wind it round. Now, I personally find this bit rather relaxing. Um, if, you're, if you're a child at home doing this, then maybe if you can't tie it, you can ask your um, whoever's making this with you to um, 
help you do the knot. If you're the parent doing this, I, I think you'll find if you're like me that this is the rather relaxing part of the process. So um, you can kind of wind it round at the top. We're just going to show you. I'm just going to show you this up close. And then what you have is you've got that string overhanging from when you started. So you want to meet them back together. Um, then tie the knot at the top. Do it a double tie, actually. I think that might be better. Also, um, if you are doing this in a pair or there's a couple of you, you can help each other by holding the stick and helping with the tying. Because sometimes when I'm doing this, um, if I'm showing my daughter, my children are three and nearly, or three and a half and nearly two. So they're not at the tying phase. So I do often end up doing the, the tying bit. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I always ask them to try and hold it for me, but they're much more interested in doing the foraging and the playing. So please, please encourage the sort of participation, but just get into your, yourself as well, grown ups, because it is a rather nice, mindful sort of activity to do for yourselves. I will leave the snipping till the end, so you'll have some loose hanging bits for now, but that's fine. Next, we'll go with these two pine cones on a um, twig. So I already had these. Uh, I had this, well, I had this from a walk that we've gone on. One of the good things about going on these daily walks is that we're trying to find, because it's the thing that's punctuating our day, we're trying to find new ways of sort of um, keeping the fun. And so we do tend to do quite a lot of foraging and bringing things home with us to see what kind of nature crafts we can we can make. So with this one, um, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna meet it a little bit further down like that. And I'm gonna choose my next color. So I'm gonna go with yellow. Um, again, holding an end out like that. So you've got a loose end and binding this around like this. This one's a slightly unusual um, one, I must say, because I've never used a, I've never used a, a, something that's all like a, I don't know, I've never used pine cones on the twig before, but I do think it adds, I wanted, I wanted to show you a variety of things because it, it is like, the more adventurous you are, I do think that it makes for a very, very interesting nature wand. And then we're gonna tie, so remember I left the, bit hanging over so then we're going to tie that one tie this next like that um if bits do snap off or anything while you're doing this don't worry about it because you can either use um other bits that you've got or found or we can make it work by tying and binding in a bit in a bit late a bit later on um if you have any sort of uh, little scraps of the string left over. So now we've got two things attached to our nature wand. We're going to, you've got the long willowy bit at the top. I always try to put the longer, more kind of extravagant pieces of foraged foliage at the top because that's the bit you're going to have the most of. Um, now, what should we use next? Maybe we will go with uh, I picked some, I think I might go with this one actually. This was from a bunch of flowers I had in um, already. And with this, I'm gonna sort of have this one on the other side. Uh, maybe I'm gonna do that, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna put this one on the other side of the pine cone. So it's gonna come slightly further down than the pine cones like that. And um, we're not gonna need all of that stalk. So before we start, I'm actually gonna make that slightly shorter like that and I'm going to put this so it's going to end up looking like this and I'm going to find my last piece of twine that I've got and um, also you might want to actually you might want to strip the leaves off so because the only bit of this that's going to be coming out is the flowered head it will be easier to tie on if you um, pull if you strip the other leaves off so there we go, that's what I mean. Then I'm gonna put this on the other side there and tie. Leave the bit hanging over like we did before. And away we go. Take your time with it as well. I even find myself rushing through this to show you, but to be honest with you, part of the um, beauty of an activity like this is that you can take your time with it. It's really, really, really sort of quite, it's quite relaxing really. Um, I had a bit of twig there that I've pulled off because that was getting in the way. 
See, I'm just doing it like this. I'm gonna come around again. And then I'm gonna tie that bit at the end. There we go. So now I've used the three pieces of twine. I've got the pink, the yellow, and the blue. Of course, whatever you're using is absolutely amazing too. And um, we've got the all the bits of foliage that I'm going to use for this particular nature one. So now I'm going to snip off the bits of string that are hanging over. There we go. And then one more bit here. And I'll just do the top bit as well. And there we go. So now we've got the main part of our nature wand. We've got the, 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 the sort of the colour, the greenery, and we've got this very sort of, I'd say the more rustic element of having the pine cones on there as well. So um, I'll just snip the stalk of that flower because that had a very, very long um, stalk. And then it keeps, I think it keeps it all rather tidy. And then we're gonna add our ribbons. So with the ribbons, the ribbons are a decorative element that I think make it kind of more um, wand-like, I suppose. So um, I'll put one ribbon at the top somewhere. I'll put the one ribbon at the top. So I'm gonna tie the ribbon just underneath the first piece of twine. I'm gonna to have to put it on the table to do this bit because as I said, it is also, please help each other to do the tying and things. You'll find that it's much easier if you're doing it in a, in a pair with the tying. And that's the one bit like that. And we can choose the next bit to go further down. So I'm gonna go just below, just below um, the pine cones here. Um, yeah tie it there. Uh, so with these, somebody asked me the other day, what do I do with all the things that have, what, what do I do with all the things I've made? And to be honest with you, I've got nature ones that I've made a year and a half ago that are still sort of out on display. Um, but, but obviously the flowers have dried over time. So they've actually, they've come to look quite beautiful. And if you're using dried herbs and things, we're going to use herbs next. It, you can keep them for ages and they smell amazing and they can continue to be used for play or you can just have them for decoration. There we go. So now you have one magical nature wand with the vibrant colours and the interesting finds. And this is something that you can do on your daily walk or in your garden um, to provide a little focus to nature-based craft and creative play. For my second nature wand, I'm going to get my stick and for this one I'm going to bundle the herbs around like that because the herbs in this particular case are I'm using as more of a sort of a fragrance rather than rather than the um well this I would say was the the showstopper of the nature wand so I'll do um one of my pieces of twine I'm going to start at the bottom with these because I've sort of um bent them over so this one I'm going to do wind and remember we're leaving that little that long end because if you bind this together like that you can then come back down because I like it when the personally I like it when the string is all together like that because it makes me feel like it's quite secure and um, but if it is more loosely it doesn't it honestly doesn't matter how you do it at all but this is the way I find is the most sort of secure. And then we're going to tie that. So we've got the, I've done the rosemary and lavender. And as I said, it smells absolutely incredible. And then next we will put on the cow parsley, which we found on a walk. For this one, I'm, I'm going to tie this one next and then I'm going to snip the stalk off. So we will put this round like this. The herbal ones I would really recommend doing because they, they smell absolutely incredible. And then tie. Tie like that. 
and then for the top well actually first of all we're going to snip i'm going to snip the stalk off this one and i might as well snip the snip the um string leftover string bits as well So now you've got one that looks like that. That would be a perfect nature wand as it is. But because we're going to go for it with this one, because I've got this incredible starburst grass, this one's going to go at the very top of the wand. So again, you're going to have that long hanging bit, but after you've tied it, you can, um, after you've tied it on, you can snip that off. So I'm going to put the, the long grass at the top, hold it there. And then I'm also going to use a feather. So for this, I might hold the grass and the feather together here. Like this. And use my last piece of string. There we go. And I don't, I'm not going to trap. I don't want to trap the cow parsley in, so I'm going to go behind the cow parsley. There we go. And this one's going to go all the way around, back to meet this other end. Back to meet the other end. And then snip the grass and snip these bits here. And now we've got a very, actually there's one little bit of grass. If anything gets tangled and you can just pull it out like that. So then we've got the feathery, grassy nature one there. And I'm gonna put the two pieces of ribbon on as well. So for this, we'll put one at the top. If you leave a gap between the string, you can put the ribbons in between the gaps and that seems to work quite well, spacing them out. And the final ribbon here, I'll use that one at the bottom. Double tie the ribbon and then there we go. Two ribbons, the twine, the feather, the long grasses. You've got your second nature wand. So now I've shown you two variations on a nature wand. The possibilities are endless. Go for it, play. Um, explore and discover what sort of things that your children might enjoy or if they want to do the foraging part and then you do the making and they, they play with them after. Whatever it is, um, there is so many ways that you can connect with nature through um, uh, play and I would say this is probably one of our favourite ways to do that. Um, I've really enjoyed making them with you today. In fact, I personally, like I've said before, find this really, really a relaxing exercise. It's something that slightly switches off my brain. I think it's the sort of the um, the, the the binding, even the sort of the smell of some of the herbs that we, or certainly the rosemary and lavender, particularly relaxing. Um, there's other activities um, like the nature wand in my book, The Joy Journal for Magical Everyday Play. Um, and I would say that if, well, personally, one thing we've taken from lockdown um, as a family have been enjoying these daily walks, um, looking for ways to engage our children in, um, you know, in nature and sort of foraging and taking books out with us and looking for things. And it's it's really been I would say that was that would be one of the things we've learned and something hopefully we'll take on after this time when this time kind of um when this time for us changes and i think i'd love to think that we will as a family continue to do daily walks together so thank you for joining me today making nature ones and i hope i'll see you again bye
If you like that video, there are loads more talks, classes, and exclusive videos from the Happy Place Virtual Festival. So don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Do follow us on Instagram for constant updates and enjoy.